Welcome back to the Lubbock County Judge runoff debate on KFYO. We will get into questions now and again in ballot order. We will start with you, Mr. Boren. Your opponent has brought up throughout his campaign the judicial side of the job accounts for 75% of the duties of Lubbock County Judge. You have disagreed with that characterization of the duties. What percentage of the job do you believe is judicial? Well, I think it's an important, critical part to the job, the probation, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, handling the, all the guardianships and uh, the probates, these sort of things. But also, this is a citizen's court set up by our founders. They set up district courts, county courts, and a people's court. This is a people's court. And uh, they intended for anyone to be the county judge as a citizen. In Texas, we have approximately 13% out of the 254 counties that are attorneys. And with that being the case, the majority of them, more than overwhelmingly, do not handle a lot of the issues that my opponent says is critical. If 75% of this job is what he says it is judicial, then somebody's not looking after the citizens, they're not looking after our criminal justice system, the, the sheriff's department, they're not looking after our roads, they're not looking at the taxation policy, they're not looking at the emergency operations center. I think the trend in Lubbock County has been, a, a, the county judge has chosen to take this type of response, but the overall job as set by the Constitution of the state of Texas is, it's administrative with uh, additional judicial responsibilities which are critical. There is a judicial, there is a judicial attorney and an investigator currently in the office of, uh, of our county judge and to handle the excess and the issues. Anything that is um, disagreeable or anything that is in conflict goes automatically to county court all three. Would you like to have a rebuttal? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the job is primarily judicial, and that fact, that's why they call it the Lubbock County Judge, uh, not Lubbock County Administrator. Uh, and and my, my opponent, Gary, is, is a little bit off. He, I, I've heard him talk about this being a citizen's court. I think he's confusing that with the JP courts. The county judge hears probates, guardianships, and mental health cases. Uh, in fact, believe it or not, it is the only court in the courthouse where you cannot represent yourself. And he's talking about being able to go and represent yourself, and that's true. You can do that at the JP level, you can do it at the district court level, you cannot do it at the county court level. Only lawyers can argue for their clients in the county court. And so we think it's vitally important uh, that the county court be headed up by an attorney with legislative and judicial experience that understands the law. This law has gotten extremely complicated. 19 new guardianship laws just in the last legislative session. And so it's very important that this court be led by an attorney okay. that has uh, legal experience. And, uh, this is probably the biggest issue that separates both of you. So I want to spend some more time on this. And Gary, I have a follow-up question for you. Uh, and then you'll again have a minute and a half here. To those who are undecided in this race, and they listen to your opponent make the case about the judicial side of things, how can they be sure that you're qualified to handle the judicial side of things? Well, it's the state constitution, Chad, and uh, I would once again point out, in the state of Texas, less than 13% are attorneys. They're citizens. It's a citizen's court. Now, who's going to look after the criminal justice system? Who's going to look after your roads? Who's going to look after your, uh, your hiring your police officers, your sheriff's duties? Uh, to sit there and say that this is a primary function is, is misleading people. Uh, the only major city in Texas that has an attorney is Dallas, and he didn't even handle probates or guardianships. This is a citizen's court that you and I, anyone, if you brought the dean of Harvard Law School to to Lubbock County and said, you're going to have to be the county judge. He'd have to take the same course that I will take when we win the election. He wouldn't get any kind of dispensation because he's an attorney. This is a citizen's court of the state of Texas Constitution written by our forefathers to keep a watch and a check and balance over the criminal justice system, the DA's office, the courts, and the, and the sheriff's department. Rebuttal. Yeah, once again, it's not a citizen's court. Uh, this is a court uh, that has specific original jurisdiction over probates, guardianships, and mental health cases. This isn't a JP court. This is not small claims court. 
This is highly complicated uh, legal uh, cases that come to the to the uh, county court. Uh, and you know, he talks about the Constitution, the way it's set up. What the Constitution says specifically in Article Five is that the county judge must be well versed in the laws of the state, well versed in the law. And then further, the legislature is the one that sets this job description. This job description is, is not set locally. It is set by the Texas legislature who says that this job is a judicial position. And if, if my opponent has a problem with the judicial part of it, he needs to take that up with the Texas legislature. They're the ones that write the job description. I'm running for the job of Lubbock County Judge. And this is the job of Lubbock County Judge to oversee probates, guardianships, and mental health cases for Lubbock County. We're, we're, we're going to move on. Uh, Mr. Parrish, just now and throughout the campaign, you've talked about your qualifications. In fact, I, was, I think you've said you're uniquely qualified for this position. Do you believe your opponent is qualified for the position? No. In, in fact, the, the, the qualifications to be Lubbock County Judge are to have that, that area of law to be well-versed, to be knowledgeable in the law. Uh, my opponent ha has brought up a, a, a lot of stuff that he will do, which is in actuality the job of a county commissioner, a manager of the county. The county judge is not the manager of Lubbock County. Uh, the four commissioners each serve within their precinct. They manage Lubbock County. It is the job of the Lubbock County judge to serve as that check and balance to those managers. Make sure they're doing their job properly. Uh, but road construction uh, and, and the, even the county judge in Lubbock County, uh, according to the Texas legislature, the budgeting part has been removed from the Lubbock County judge. And that wasn't done locally, that was done in Austin. And so for counties our size, even the budget requirements or we have a county auditor who serves as the budget officer and it is the job of the county judge to provide leadership, provide vision, and provide an opportunity to be that check and balance to all of those entities. And that is the role of the Lubbock County Judge in Lubbock County. Mr. Barnett, I assume you have a rebuttal. I'm totally amazed to sit here and think for all these hundreds of years of Texas history and all, the cities, and, and all the cities, the major cities in Texas, my opponent thinks that you have to be an attorney to do this. When the state lays out the, the rules and the guidelines for what a county judge does. And nowhere does it say you have to be an attorney. You have to have judicial experience to do this. That's misleading people. You're trying to rewrite the state constitution. And if that's the case, even the whole panhandle didn't have one attorney. And I would say that you missed it. You should have run for county court law three. That's where they handle the probates and the things you're talking about. This is for the citizens to have oversight. Oversight, checks and balance of the criminal justice system. Our forefathers said, this is about our democracy and checks and balances. And you don't have to be an attorney to do this. And it just, it's over, it wows me to think that you sit there and say something like that. Have a follow up. Well, sure, in the entire history of Lubbock County, We've only had one county judge that was neither an attorney nor had judicial experience prior to becoming county judge in the entire history of Lubbock County. In fact, one of my great mentors was, was, one of, was the great county judge, Rod Shaw. Rod Shaw served Lubbock County admirably and honorably for many years. He was a probate attorney prior to becoming county judge. And so he did, he served Lubbock County and did both of the jobs very well, both the judicial and the administrative job. Only Don McBeth came into the job in Lubbock County not as an attorney or with judicial experience. Judge Tom Head, who's our current county judge, was a JP judge prior to becoming county judge, which he now has served for 20 years, coming up on 20 years his term. So in, in Lubbock County, we have always been served by someone with a, a, either an attorney or judicial experience, always. We've had that in Lubbock County. And so uh, it's, it, it's, it's not flooring. In fact, it is what we do in Lubbock County. Mr. Gordon, I'll give you one minute. This is not a job reserved for an attorney. Tom Head is not an attorney. He had some experience. So to mislead people by saying he, had, he was an attorney and a judge, the last two people we've had are not attorneys. The state of our, the, the capital of our state, Austin, 
Austin, Texas does not have an attorney as a county judge. The Panhandle, Amarillo, Abilene, San Angelo, Denton, Fort Worth, a few cities, they don't have attorneys. And to mislead people and try to rewrite the state constitution in a political election, that's not right. Mr. Parrish, I have a follow-up. Yeah, just, oh, it, he, he brings up these large counties and what, what he realized, those are statutory probate court counties. Those are reserved for the top 10 counties in Texas. The Texas legislature has bifurcated the role of the county judge. And you have a county judge who's an administrator and a county judge who is the statutory probate judge. And those counties that he mentioned, uh, the big top 10 counties, that's exactly right. They have a statutory probate court. Lubbock County is the 18th largest county. We don't have that. That job is built into one person, one county judge, and I'm the only one willing to do 100% of that job. Have a follow-up for you. Abilene, Amarillo. Thank you. Amarillo, Mr. Boren, hey, please. Speak to the voters who don't care much about the judicial side of the job. As you know, there are some out there, and so many of them are undecided. How can they be sure that you can lead the commissioner's court when it's your opponent who has had previous experience in government and dealing with a budget? Well, I am a fifth generation West Texan, and uh, I have a great deal of experience, uh, both in legislative and in business. Uh, I have, uh, I, I worked in, in Lubbock Media for 16 years. Part of what I did was actually to cover Lubbock County. That's how I got to know Judge Rod Shaw, he and his wife Bobby, great friends. Uh, also, when I was with Senator Duncan, my job was to be the liaison between the Senate office and the counties of the 28th Senatorial District, about 51 counties. And so I got to know how county government works, how it works uh, in small rural counties, and how it works in large urban counties like Lubbock. And I'll tell you, uh, Lubbock County is doing it right, and county government does it right. Uh, and uh, that, is the, that is the branch of government that oversees public safety, uh, roads and maintenance, and it oversees our judicial uh, system as well. And I feel very uniquely qualified uh, to, to oversee all of that. Yes, it is an administrative job, but you provide that check and balance, not to, just to the commissioner's court, but to the budget officer as well, and to all the other departments within Lubbock County. Mr. Bourne, the next question is to you. When it comes to the administrative process of guardianship and probate cases, what can be done, if anything needs to be done, to make sure the process is, is more efficient in Lubbock County? Well, basically what has taken place now is that the uh, state has put a, an attorney into the, into the courtroom uh, with a judge head and an investigator to help on these cases. And anything that's not contested is easily to have an administrative hearing and handle these cases. And once again, my opponent, if he wants to be a judge, he should run for County Court 3 against David Nelson and Judge Hayes, and he chose not to. This is a citizen's court. And so based on that, those are the rules that they have set up to deal with the overload of guardianship cases and things like uh, the probate wills that they have contested type of issues. To uh, talk about experience and in, in being with the media to cover government, or to talk about experience uh, to answer the phone in a state rep's office and take complaints is not legislative experience. It's not getting the job done. It's not passing policy, dealing with budgets. What we're talking about here is something that makes Lubbock County unique, and it's having someone that knows how to put their hand, work with the commissioners, and get things done, and make sure we get our public safety where it should be, our criminal justice system where it should be, and support the, uh, the DA's office so we can prosecute these criminals and keep them in jail. That's what protects us as citizens. And that's why our state gave the county judge the authority to work and to lead and to show leadership in these areas. Uh, we're going to give you a minute, the same minute and a half on this answer. Uh, yes, the, uh, the, Gary's right. It is the county judge. Uh, and and it, is a, it is a very important administrative function that the county judge serves in Lubbock County. And it's not just overseeing or being the presiding officer of the commissioner's court. The county judge also is the head of emergency management for Lubbock County. And this is a very vital part of what the Lubbock County judge does. In fact, 
I, I used to say, uh, if we have an emergency or if we have a disaster, and, and I was corrected very strongly in saying, it's not a matter of if, it's always a matter of when. And so as county judge, uh, what you do is you draw in uh, all of those resources in order to mitigate that particular disaster that comes in, either through the cities or through the state or through the federal government and FEMA. And so I feel very qualified uh, to do that particular job for Lubbock County Judge. Plus, you're also the head of the elections of Lubbock County. And so uh, being and knowing election law is, is part of my practice as an attorney. I know election law. I also know contract law. Uh, this is part of what I do. And as county judge, I will bring all of those administrative skills uh, to the table and do the entire 100% job for the citizens of Lubbock. And, and I'll just say, I did a whole lot more than just answer the phone. That, that seems a little rough, but uh, I also was, was part of a policy direction and also part of writing law. And uh, that is what gained my interest into actually going to law school as well. One minute rebuttal. Well, in emergency operations, my opponent doesn't have any experience at all in that area. He can talk about the job description and what he described is true. I've had experience. When Katrina hit Lubbock, we sat down there with Mayor Mark McDougall, Tom Martin, ourselves, and all of Lubbock's public safety, fire chief, chief, uh, the chief of DPS, uh, the sheriff, all the all the, the water, the sewer, all the components that come together to protect and work with communities and work with the governor's office. I've had hands-on experience of that. He's reading a job description. He has not had hands-on experience doing that. And lastly, um, you know, when it comes to the administration of this office, uh, you, you have to have budgeting skills. You've got to have personnel skills. You've got to know how to work with groups of people, 300, 400, 500 how to understand public safety, their needs, how to build a progression plan in government, how to have government policy and purchasing, contracting, and work with all these and lead and get the, the contracting done on the on the county roads that need to be done that hasn't been done in Lubbock, Texas like it needs to be. We're going to go ahead and take our next break here on KFYO. When we come back, we will continue our debate, the Lubbock County Judge runoff debate here on Newstalk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO. Welcome back to the Lubbock County Judge runoff debate between Gary Boring and Curtis Parrish. Our next question, Mr. Boring, goes to you first. So both of you will have an opportunity to answer this, of course. As we all know, voters in the city of Lubbock voted in favor of abandoning the Lubbock Municipal Coliseum and Auditorium this past Saturday. In your role as Lubbock County Judge, would you support a venue tax election in Lubbock County to help pay for a new dirt floor arena? No, sir. Because our mission from the legislature's criminal justice system is to take care of the courts, to take care of the prosecutor's office, take care of the sheriff's office, the jail, and all the, all the uh, businesses that go with that, to take care of the county roads. How could I, good conscience, tell you that we're going to support what is in your taxes to build an entertainment facility when you've got a strip pavement down by the second fastest growing school district in Texas that has never been fixed and broken promises with Lubbock Cooper. We've got issues of friendship, school district, child water, Idaloo, roads and, and slate that need addressing uh, over in um, uh, Ransom Canyon, some areas there. How can I go to you in good conscience and say, well, pay more money so we can have entertainment? No, I can't do that. I wish I could. I love entertainment. I brought major entertainment acts to Lubbock. Sir Paul, Sir Paul McCartney, Rascal Flats, ZZ Top. Uh, you know, I've worked on many music acts coming to Lubbock. I love these kind of venues. And I love FFA and FHA and rodeos and, and the, the programs. Junior Livestock. But we've got to have our mission that we're accomplished, that we're supposed to do and not be chasing things that are not, uh, not focus on our mission, and that's what gets government in trouble. Mr. Parrish. Yeah, our core mission in, in Lubbock County is uh, public safety, it's roads and maintenance, and it's in our uh, judicial system. Those are our core values, our core mission values in Lubbock County. And anything that deviates from that, uh, it just gets us off on a rabbit trail. No, I would not support that, and for a couple of reasons, not just because it's wrong for Lubbock County, but we're statutorily prohibited from doing that. In fact, only, uh, to sell bonds for a county 
to sell bonds uh, for a sports facility, we have to be above $1.2 million. That's according to the government code 1432.001. So it's not just the fact that I'm not for that. It would be against the law for us as the county to come back and to try to sell bonds in order to build a sports arena. This is not the job of Lubbock County Judge, and I am completely against this proposal. I have a follow-up. Mr. Boyne, you were on the Lubbock City Council, and as you know, voters have been pretty angry with the current and past Lubbock City Council uh, members because of deferred maintenance. Both of you have talked about maintenance on the county-wide level, and that being something important. Speak to the voters a little bit about the decisions made while you were a council member on not putting more into the auditorium coliseum and if that will have any impact on your decision when it comes to maintenance as the Lubbock County Judge. Chad, in 2004, under, under Mayor Mark McDougall, Tom Martin, Jim Gilworth, myself, and the others on the city council, uh, we had inherited a, a mess at LPNL is in the hole of $2 million. We found out that our number one water resource, Lake Meredith, was dry, and we had to focus on getting water for Lubbock citizens, but we had to fix roads. We had a bond election, and it was in 2004, $30 million that passed 67%, I believe. And here's the, here's the kicker on this thing. We made a promise to our citizens, because it was in recession times, that if they would support voting for this bond, we would not raise your taxes. We would, as, as the debt was being paid off, we would release bond money. And that's, we gave our word, and we kept our word, and then from 2002 to 2004, we had three elections that everything passed, 67%, 60% on sales tax, 82% on LPNL separate from the city, because we kept our word. And that's what you have to do is, is to have trust in your government, is keep your word and have trust. Mr. Parrish. Yeah, part of, part of that also was that they, they said that they would put $4 million of that into the Auditorium Coliseum to, to build it up, to get it up to code, all of those things that, that was promised to us as voters back in 2004. And that council, uh, with Gary Bourne on the council, decided to spend that money on something else other than the Auditorium Coliseum. That's why we're in the position today where we've got a deteriorated facility because of deferred maintenance. And this particular policy, we all know, we were asked to vote for this in 04, which we did, uh, to the tune of 66, 67%. And yet that money was not spent for the Coliseum, it was spent for something else. So we are in that position today, where the voters now had to make a decision to abandon the Coliseum because of its deteriorated status, because that council decided to spend that money that was promised to the Coliseum and the auditorium and spend it on something else. Well, That's why we're here today. Was that a bad decision in your opinion? Yeah, I, I think it was a dishonest uh, decision. If, if they wanted to not spend the money on the Coliseum, they should have said, this bond money, this $30 million package, none of it's going to go to the Coliseum, but that's not how it was sold to us. They wanted our vote. They wanted our vote for this big, humongous bond election to add debt to the city, and they said, we'll use $4 million to fix up the Coliseum and Auditorium. And we all said, yes, that's important. And they failed. Mr. Morgan. That is a total misrepresentation, untruth statements on your whole discussion here. That money was not released at all. Number one issue that was released was $9 million for roads. Number one issue released. Number two that was released was $6 million. And the, and the Coliseum didn't even come up until after 2009 or 10. So my opponent's got his facts messed up. That bond was set up to be released in stages as debt goes down. He has no experience in government, so he doesn't understand debt, bonding this, how it works, and how you pay down, and how you release. It's because he has no experience. He doesn't understand how a government operates. And we made a promise to the citizens, and they voted for it, base it be released over, over time. And the next time it came up to be released was in 2010. That was uh, years after I wasn't there, but the council kept its word, and that's why we had bonds being passed, local elections being passed during the four uh, period we were there. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if, if experience, we, we know what experience is doing to us at the city level. Our city council right now, our city of Lubbock is $1.5 billion in debt. $1.5 billion. And this is from policies back in the time that Gary Bourne was sitting on council. Because this was an idea that said that we, what we will do is what we will do is we will take and spend bond money and we'll deal with it later. We'll kick the can down the road. Now, was it for good and important projects? Granted. But Lubbock, the city of Lubbock has the highest bond debt of any city in the state of Texas. Any city. Lubbock, the city of Lubbock. Now, Lubbock County, we have one debt, and that was for the detention center. That will be paid off in seven, eight years. When that's paid off, that debt will roll off and Lubbock County will be debt free. And I'm committed as Lubbock County judge to keep us debt free. Mr. Gordon, I'll give you one more rebuttal. That is totally false and incorrect. The bonds were released according to the way they were sold. He has no experience in government, so therefore he makes these exaggerations. Do you know why Lubbock got in debt in the early 2000s? If we hadn't gone in debt and bought water in Roberts County, you, I mean, you wouldn't have had water today. If we didn't build pipelines to get water to Lubbock, you wouldn't have water today. If you didn't have a waste treatment plant, the waste treatment plant, the sewer plant, the pipeline, the Lake Allen Henry, you're talking about over 250 million. We didn't go out and buy $120 million worth of Citizens Tower or this tower or that tower. I never heard you speak to those kind of issues. You haven't said one word about those. The debt we had was based on what Lubbock had to have, and you don't have elections on infrastructure water. You have to learn that when you have experience in government. Let's talk about roads in Lubbock County. Uh, during our last debate, Mr. Boren, I, I believe you brought up that you would be in favor of a bond election to cover road repairs in Lubbock County. Uh, since then, I'm sure both of you have gotten feedback over that issue. One, what needs to be done to take care of roads, in particular Woodrow Road and other major roads? Two, and this question goes to you first, Mr. Parrish, would you support a bond election to take care of roads in Lubbock County? No, uh, I do. I would not support a bond election. That just puts us in debt and puts us on a path that leads us to where the city of Lubbock is right now. Uh, we have to learn to live within our means. This is good, sound, fiscal, conservative budgeting to live within our means. There are roads issues in Lubbock County, granted. Uh, in fact, Woodrow Road uh, is, it, it's really, its only problem is it's two lanes. I'm more concerned about the roads, the feeder roads that go into Woodrow. Uh, if you drive up and down, say, South University, uh, it is full of potholes. It is a dangerous road, and they're about to open uh, Cooper East, the elementary school, right off of South University. This is road that needs our highest priority right now. Uh, Woodrow, it, it, it is a great surfaced road. Its problem is it's, it's possibly too small. But other than that, I am more concerned about the roads that feed into Woodrow Road. Those are dangerous, and those need our highest priority. And no, I would not do it with bond elections. I would not do it with the GO. I would not do it with CO bonds either. That's just getting out the credit card and just swiping the credit card. That's a spend and tax policy, and I am a fiscal conservative. I do not spend and then tax later, force our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to pay off the debt. We pay as you go. That is my sound fiscal conservative Hi. policy. Mr. Boren, do you still support a bond election Absolutely. for county roads? Absolutely, because a bond is voted on by you, the citizens. It's our job to go out and tell you what our needs are, and the only way you can get it done, and the amount of money it's going to cost to get it done, is by you approving it. I don't believe in going out and using a CO that built Citizens Tower or anything like that. I believe in using the GO where you vote and you approve it, just like the, the jail was approved. Now let me speak to his lack of understanding how roads work. The thoroughfare is Woodrow Road. It's strip paving, two lanes. It's been that way before 20, wait, I mean, it's been that way like over 15 years. You have over 50 yellow dog buses, morning, noon, and night. You have children, 16-year-olds, driving this road. You have parents, grandparents driving it. And it's two-lane, 
and you're worried about feeder roads, they haven't even started being used hardly at all because of the heavy traffic. As a matter of fact, they've been told by the transportation department that this is one of the most traveled roads in Lubbock, Texas, is Wood Road. You've got to fix, it's a safety issue, folks, and if we don't address it, someone's going to get killed. It's a tragedy. And I have to go out and tell you the truth and tell you what it's going to take and get everyone to pitch in that benefits the whole county to get this done. One minute rebuttal. Yeah, and that's the problem with uh, a, a geo bond and election. Uh, you cannot have an election uh, to, to authorize you to raise your taxes that will take care of only one portion of the county. Geo bonds are to benefit the whole county. Uh, just like it was with the detention center. And, and so, yeah, you're right. We cannot do this with CO bonds. In fact, I think we are legally prohibited from doing this with CO bonds um, and because we have seen the abuse that governments do when they just have the free credit card and they're able just to swipe the credit card and put everything on onto my children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We have to pay as you go. We have to raise the money. Uh, we have to partnership with the state. We partnership with private industry. And we get these roads built. And yes, these feeder roads are not just small. They are dangerous. And, uh, and there's going to be a lot of yellow dog uh, buses on those roads. And they need to be fixed today. I have visited with TxDOT. I've talked to other cities in the Columbia County. It's going to take all of us together to get the infrastructure fixed. You can't cherry pick what benefits one and not help everyone in the whole county. Right. I believe, like my opponent, you have to live within your means. That's why we put the checkbook in your hands. You voted, but we gotta be truthful with you and we have to spend the money with you the way we told you. When they sold you the jail, they told you what it was gonna cost and they had to make some enlargements to cause the population to be efficient. But they told you the truth to get that thing done and you believed them in the same way with roads. Woodrow Road is dangerous. We've got to get it fixed. There's a road only really by uh, friendships. Got to get fixed. We have one death anymore on those highways. You'll be you'll be talking real loud to us about this thing. So I'm telling you, folks, it's the only way we can get things done with your approval. We can do it, and I have to let you know the truth. I do thank the audience member who submitted that question. Moving on, on May 15th, there will be the final day citizens in Lubbock County can protest their property tax bills. According to KMAC News, the average home value went up $10,000, an increase of over 7%. What can the commissioner's court do to have a little relief for taxpayers? I'm sorry. And, that, and that is to you first. Thank you. Uh, the appraisal values are not in control of the Lubbock County judge. The county judge has no control whatsoever on the appraisals that you're in. I, I have that too. My, our house went up. Our rent houses went up. Uh, we experienced a higher appraisal value too. In fact, that all generated and directed by the Texas legislature. Uh, the county commissioners and the county judge cannot affect your appraisal rate. What we can affect, though, is that ad valorem rate. And, and if we can provide tax relief to the citizens of Lubbock, it is dropping that ad valorem rate down. Uh, and and I, think, I think it is possible to do that, especially after the debt rolls off uh, on the detention center, we will see our taxes get lowered to do that. Uh, but to come back and say we will lower your appraisal values cannot be done uh, by the county judge. That is that is an impossibility. Uh, but I will also say that the, this this is the reason why, through the commissioners who are the managers of the court and the county judge, uh, our ability to provide a small amount because Lubbock is, Lubbock County is actually the in, in Lubbock County is the third uh, taxing. You've got, the, you've got the, the school board, you've got the city, and then you've got Lubbock County. We can provide tax relief for our citizens. It's not much, uh, but certainly if you want good, meaningful tax relief, look to your school boards, look to your city council. Mr. Board, do you know what our tax rate is at the county? 35A. Okay. Here's our problem, folks. The taxes, the appraisals, are done by the state, the state of Texas legislature. The taxation and policy says there will be uniform appraisals and taxation by all the counties in, in, in the state. We cannot affect the appraisal process. That is statutory. What we can affect 
is exactly how the money will be spent, whether you take the effective rate, which is the money it took to run the government last year, and then you have new growth, and then you have uh, these kind of policies. I've seen people, I've been out, I've had people tell me their appraisal have gone up 144%. I've seen it. I looked at it. I didn't believe it. And I'm telling you, when you see things like that, you, you have to certainly protest, but you have to have look to the government. It's elected officials that hold the key to lowering your, your tax rate. When your values go up, you want them to go up. You want them to go up for the, that's your biggest investment in life. But you don't want it happening for taxation purposes. And so the only way that can happen is that the city, school, and county, they lower the tax rate to offset the, the big hike in the values. That has not been taking place. And that's why our governor Abbott has said, if you don't do that, we'll give you 2.5% money on what you had last year, then just going to trigger an election, and we'll find out that everybody will come to the altar real quick and lower your taxes to, get, to, to stop them getting thrown out of office. That's the only way you can stop it. We're going to move on to public safety before our next break and our final break. Have either of you, and this, uh, this question goes to you, Mr. Boring, first, have either of you sat down with Sheriff Kelly Rowe to find out what exactly he needs more of when it comes to either budget money or anything to fight drugs, the sex trade, uh, or whatever else may be going on in Lubbock County? What does he need more of, and how can you and the Commissioner's Court fix it? Not only have I sat down with Sheriff Rowe and looked at his needs and priorities, but I've gone out in the county and I've ridden with Sheriff Rowe, I've ridden with his deputies, I've ridden with them in SWAT cases where I've seen them take down, you wouldn't believe the, the kind of perpetrators we have in Lubbock County that, is, that, are, that are out there. I've seen what they're doing in, in the drug trade and what they need, the tools, they need the training, they need the, the most latest equipment, the, the firearms, we need to protect them with the best firearms that's possible, the best uh, 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 armor to protect them. You have to give them all these tools, the best technology, and then you have to help the, if you if you go out and arrest everybody, it doesn't do a bit of good if you don't have the prosecutors that are top notch and getting what they need to support to put them in the jail. And you also has to take care of these people that, that staff our jail, the jailers. And you gotta get top notch people. And he's having to compete with all the school districts now. Texas Tech, DPS, if he, and, and it's, it's putting a drain on him losing people that are critical people to all these other forces that are public safety, uh, law enforcement. So we got to get him the budget responsible so he can fight property crimes, he can fight the drugs. I've seen the tables full, that length, full of drugs and weapons and cash. They busted here in Lubbock with the cartel. I've seen what they've done. And I'll tell you folks, we're in a war, and that's why I'm telling you it's a priority. It's one of my top three priorities, is help the sheriff protect us. Hi. Mr. Parrish. Yeah, I've sat down with uh, Sheriff Rowe many times, and one of the things that, that he has said directly to me uh, that they need to make sure is, is on Sheriff Patrol. Uh, they, need, uh, they need boots on the ground. They need folks in the field. Uh, right now, uh, they're the highest budgetary item of the Sheriff's Department is the detention center. And most of the personnel who work for the Sheriff's Department work out of the detention center. If Sheriff Kelly Rowe does have a need, it is in the need of patrol and making sure that we have adequate uh, sheriff's deputies who can cover all quadrants of our county. Uh, that is the, that's the direct answer to your question is uh, he needs additional personnel. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Sheriff Rowe went to the commissioner's court and said, I, we need some extra funding for our, our drug enforcement. And the commissioners actually raised the ad valorem tax in order to give the sheriff those additional tools uh, that they need, that he needs uh, to fight our, our drug crack. We're the hub city, and therefore we are also the hub city for drug trafficking. We're also the hub city for sex trafficking, and that just absolutely crushes my heart. So I wanna make sure that the sheriff does have the personnel that he needs uh, to make sure that we are all safe and secure in our homes. When we come back, final statements from the candidates for Lubbock County Judge.